All right, um, we got one question here um, about, um, does this automatically come on when engraving and cutting? Uh, that, no, that's a great question. So yes, um, it will. There is a, a little valve inside of the machine that will um, trigger the air on and off once you hit, um, once you hit start. Um, it's, it's a little toggle switch um, in your setting. So each layer has it and it's called air assist. Um, and you definitely want to make sure that that's always on. So it should be on by default. Um, if for some reason you're cutting and you see a flame, that, that's usually a good indicator that you're not getting air out of the nozzle. And that's usually one of the first things we ask someone to check is like, hey, did you have the air assist toggle on in your settings? So it should be on. Good question. Um, all right. So um, we're going to move on to a controlled burn. And, and really, this is... Um, I'm just going to get into the science of what you're doing and how to control it. Um, and, and there's, you know, there's variables to this. And, and essentially, uh, this is your rite of passage to really becoming proficient here is you, you kind of want to know how, how the laser um, is, is controlled, how you're controlling that burn on your material. And it's, uh, it's just like any other, you know, purposely lit fire, you know, you're doing the same thing. Um, so there's skill involved here to make sure that, you know, you get, you get the best control out of it. The more control you have, the better the results you get. So there's four variables here. Um, the acronym for it is SPIF, speed, power, interval, and focus. And those are the four things that are really going to um, affect uh, how you control that burn. Speed and power are the main ones. I would, I would tell you guys, that's really where your main focus is going to be um, just getting started. Uh, interval and focus, I consider those more for fine tuning, but we will go over them as well. Uh, so speed, the rate at which the laser beam travels uh, will determine how deep it will penetrate. So here's a good analogy. Um, you know, imagine moving your hand over a candle. Uh, we've all done that at some point, you know, probably when you were in high school, trying to see who can hold their hand over the candle the longest. So obviously the slower you move your hand, the hotter it's gonna get. You're giving you know, it more time to, to really heat up. Uh, conversely, the faster you move your hand, the less you feel it. So that's how speed affects your burn. Slower you go, the deeper it's gonna be, you know, the more time it'll have to heat up and the deeper that mark, that, that engraving or cut's gonna be uh, and vice versa. Um, and power um, is, is basically the wattage. So you can control that. It's, it's controlled by a percentage. And, and that's also gonna affect how quickly the material heats up. Um, so, you know, just think of your stove, you know, you got that low and that high setting on there. Um, and of course, you know, you don't always just throw your food on the stove and crank it up to high all the way, you know, you're gonna just burn your food. Um, but, you know, that's, you're controlling this, you're controlling your power. And I'll get into that. I'll give you guys some, some tips on, on really how to, how to dial this stuff in. Um, interval, again, this is, um, it is important to know it, it's only when filling and the interval is really the distance between adjoining passes. Um, so it really um, affects your resolution and also affects um, how long the material stays hot. Um, so that's, that's kind of important. So, um, you know, here's a good analogy. The, the best I could think of, we've all painted a room before and you know that when you're swiping left to right and painting the wall, you're intentionally trying to overlap the previous pass you did, you know, you we want to blend it. Um, but if you stay in one spot too long, you're just oversaturating the wall with paint, you know, and you don't want to do that. Same thing with the laser. You know, you don't want to stay in the same spot too long. You're just, you know, you're oversaturating your material with heat. Uh, and that's, that's not necessary. And then we've got focus. Um, and that determines um, a few things, but particularly the spot size of your laser, which ultimately determines um, your, your resolution. So, there are different lenses you can put in the machine. Um, standard is a two inch lens. That means it takes two inches from the time the beam hits the lens to the time it's perfectly focused on your material. Uh, and what I mean by that is it, the lens really creates like a cone. The minute your laser beam hits that lens in your laser head, it starts to reduce it into a cone shape. And two inches from that lens is where it's going to be its strongest. And that's what we refer to when is your laser in focus. That's the most powerful point of the beam. Um, and the minute it hits that focal point, it starts to diverge. It starts to get unfocused again. So it almost makes like an X. You get a cone coming in where it gets really, really small and really powerful. 
and instantly starts to reverse and get really, it starts to spread out and get weaker and weaker. Um, so you can use different lenses um, in, in the mirrors. You can also opt for a 1.5 inch lens, which gives you um, a, a tinier spot size. Uh, so that's a whole different chapter, but um, you know, you guys really just need to know that it is a variable and it does affect um, your resolution. Now, um, it also determines how much heat is being concentrated. And that's, that's um, I think, one of the more important things is, um, you know, when you're trying to find settings, a lot of times if you're working with material that doesn't take kindly the heat or it starts melting or it gets really gooey, that's when you kind of play it, start playing around with your focus. Um, so you can purposely take your laser out of focus um, to, to achieve that. And I know that's later on, but just, you know, here's a good analogy for that is you've all held a magnifying glass up to the sun, maybe as a kid, uh, and you realize that, you know, at, at a certain distance from a pile of leaves, you can start a little fire. Um, so that just might help you, you know, connect the dots there is how this is working. It's the same thing. You're taking light from the sun and you're concentrating it to where it creates so much intensity that it burns. Um, that's what your machine is doing. Same exact thing. Uh, quick question here is uh, when we hit the autofocus button, is that automatically setting it at a two inch focus? Uh, and the answer is yes. That's what the autofocus is doing for you. Um, it is set to two inches because that's the lens that's in there. Um, in the Mira, if you put a 1.5 inch lens, um, there's actually a space for it in that lens caddy on the bottom that's spaced out exactly a half inch underneath the two inch lens. So if you ever decide you wanna use a one and a half inch lens, you can still use autofocus. It'll still create the correct distance because we're actually moving the lens in the caddy half an inch below. So if it's a one and a half inch lens, half, half inch below the two inch, it's still the same distance. So no, that's a great question. 